There you go. We're here today to let you know that we want to give God praise and honor and glory for who he is. And we want to let you know that we have a right to praise him. We got a reason to praise him. Why? Because God has been good. I wish you would stand up on Come your on feet now. with me today. Put those hands together. If God has really been good, make a loud noise in this place. Yeah. 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 Are there any blessed people in this yeah. place? Yeah. I say, are there any blessed people in this place? I say, is anybody blessed up in here? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Let me hear you say, bless, 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 bless. Everybody say, bless, 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 bless. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must see, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed in the city, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed. The devil is defeated. We are blessed. You say bless, 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 bless. Say I'm, I'm blessed. Bless. Say you're, you're blessed. Bless. Say everybody's blessed. Everybody says everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. We're blessed in the city. Say we're blessed in the city. We're blessed. In the field, oh, yeah. we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every sorrow, and we poverty must for the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. Oh. We are blessed. Late in the midnight, come on. Yeah. God's gonna turn his head with me. Come on, it's gonna work in your favor. Everybody say, Late in the midnight, late in the midnight. It's gonna work in your favor. Oh, late in the midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn around. It's gonna work in your favor. It's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn around. And 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 around. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. 
Father God, we want to thank you for this day, dear Heavenly Father. We're blessed, Lord, to be in your presence once again, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we come to you not for form nor fashion, Lord, but to lift up your holy and righteous name, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, right now we ask that you allow the Holy Spirit, Lord, to fill this place, Father God. Touch our pastor as he brings your word, Lord. Saturate him from it, head to toe, dear Heavenly Father, so that the words that come out of his mouth, Father God, are pleasing unto you and not man, Lord. Lord, we ask that you excite our hearts this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. As we lift you up, Lord, and for that we'll be ever so grateful. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. One more time, everybody say, bless, 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 Together, come on. Come on, make a loud noise in this place. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, we just came to tell you that we have a right to praise the Lord today. We got a right. Anybody got a right and a reason to praise him? Yeah. Here we go. One. I've got a right. Praise the Lord, He's my joy, my all in all, He's my strength when I need Him most, Jesus fill me with the Holy Ghost. I got a right, got a right to praise the Lord. Praise The Lord has done in the life of a wretch like me. From all the simple ways that I have known, God has come along and rescued me. I got a right. Oh, right. right. oh. He's my joy. I all in all. He's my strength. He's my strength. Yeah. I came to Jesus just as I was right. <laughs> broken hearted with misery all the chains that had me bound he loosed my shackles and yeah, set me free I got a right, I got a right. Yeah. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord yeah That the Lord has made, oh, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, yeah, to praise the Lord. I say His praises, His blessed praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on. Early this morning, yes he did, the Lord raised you up, oh, you weren't on your cooling bed, come on, let's praise him, continue to praise him, come on church, come on everybody, let me hear you say, oh, 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 I got a right, come on, say it. Come on church, just, let me hear you say, oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. You got a right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got a right to praise the Lord. Thank you, fellas. Isn't it good to see the men back up? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I felt something in the Holy Ghost, right? When they were singing, and they said, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. I felt something up in here. Somebody's been, somebody been praying about something. Somebody's been struggling with something. Somebody's been up late in the midnight hour waiting for God to turn it around. Amen. I, I, I want to tell you, you're in the right place at the right time to receive a blessing from the Lord. Amen. God bless you on this morning. Great to see you all another Sunday morning. Amen. For those who are viewing us, amen, from the virtual sanctuary, God bless you. Amen. Thank you for your presence. Thank all of you. Amen. To our visitors uh, who are with us uh, here in the physical building, for those who are watching us for the first time, uh, thank you for your presence. Uh, we invite you, amen, to come back again. Uh, join us. Bring a friend, amen. We invite you, amen, for those who are watching virtually, amen, to like the service and share the service. Uh, we want to be a blessing to somebody else. We want our service to touch uh, from people from sea to, to from coast to coast, amen. Uh, we are grateful, amen, to uh, be here together, amen, one more time in service, amen. Uh, we are going to uh, let Sister Thomas come up and uh, give us our announcements. She's going to come and uh, give us our announcements, and uh, we'll rise again, amen. Good morning. Good morning. I come to you this morning with just a few announcements. Y'all have to forgive me. Um, if you see a little bit of, of um, water on my face, that's because I'm glistening a little bit. You know, when you hit a certain age for women, we start glistening a little bit. So uh, if you see a little glistening, just chalk it up to that. Okay, um, the scholarship and education ministry will recognize high school and college graduates from the years 2020 to 2022 and NLBC youth ages 2 through 18 for the month of August. Each youth will be given a gift in recognition of their graduation or accomplishment or developmental milestone. Parents are asked to submit the youth's name, school grade, and include more, no more than two highlights of achievement to the church's email address. Or complete this form. If you are here today, they are located right outside the, um, the doors. And you can just fill them out, and you can place them in the box, or you can hand them to me, and I'll make sure that they get to the correct person. This information is due by July 31st. It's that time of year again for Women's Day. Women's Day will be held on August 14th, which is the second Sunday. We have Reverend Dr. Valerie Carter-Smith, who is the Associate Minister at Mount Tabor. All right, guys, I know we all are excited because it is VBS time. Yes, 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 yes. And I know you all are just ready for VBS at the light. This year's theme is Brace for Impact on a Collision Course with Culture. And it will be held for two weeks, guys, two weeks. That means that each age group will be able to attend for two classes. Mark your calendars, plan to attend. Um, teens, you're gonna kick it off on Monday and Tuesday. That's the 18th and 19th at seven o'clock p.m. Again, teens, Monday and Tuesday, 
July 18th and 19th at 7 o'clock p.m. is also being shown on your screen if you're at home. Please write this down. Young Adults, Wednesday through Thursday, July 20th through the 21st at 7 o'clock p.m. Adults, Friday, July 22nd and Monday, July 25th at 7 o'clock p.m. Pre-K and Kindergarten, Tuesday and Wednesday, July 26th through 27th at 6 o'clock p.m. First and second grade, Tuesday through Wednesday, July 26th through 27th at 7 o'clock p.m. Third grade through fifth grade, Thursday and Friday, July 28th and 29th at 6 o'clock p.m. Sixth grade through eighth grade. That's Thursday through Friday, July 28th through 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. So third grade through fifth grade, 28th to 29th at 6, 6th grade through 8th grade, July 28th through 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, if you should have received the registration information through your email, if you have not, please see me. If you have any problems registering, please see me. Guys, the teachers have been working hard. They're excited. They're ready to go. I'm excited, so I hope that you all will be there to join us. When I say they have been working hard, they have been working hard. I know because I've been in the back watching them work hard. So they are ready to go. Let's support them and join VBS this year. This next announcement, um, I have to say is the one that I'm most excited about because it has to do with our wonderful pastor. On next Sunday, July 24th, at our 11 o'clock a.m. worship service, New Life will celebrate four wonderful years! Four wonderful years of pastor and people. Yes, yes! We are so excited that God has sent us Reverend Corey T. Blaine and the first family to guide us and to help us grow in God's word. Our very own Reverend Bruce Jones, pastor of First Baptist Church, Louisa, will be the guest preacher for this awesome occasion. The theme for this year's pastoral anniversary is celebrating devoted leadership in unprecedented times. This is based on 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. But we have this treasure in jars of clay that this all-surpassing power of God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. We are also excited to announce that we will play bingo, Pastor's Anniversary Bingo, on Friday, July 22nd from 8 to 9. This will be immediately after VBS. You will be getting more information um, in your email so that you can register. For those of you who joined us um, when we played bingo before, we had a wonderful time. We had some people, um, Deacon Thornton, that was um, <laughs> uh, a bit of a challenge. Deacon Arthur Thornton, there was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, <laughs> but we had a great time fellowshipping in the Lord. We ask you all to um, please come out and support our pastor. He has been there for us in thick and thin. So we want to show him how much we support and love him and, um, and be there for him on next Sunday and for the bingo game night. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Praise man. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Thomas. Amen for telling us all those announcements so I can get a breather. Amen. Thank God. I'm trying to remember all that stuff by myself. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I was sharing with her this week. I was like, um, uh, last week I forgot to announce VBS. And I didn't think about it until church was over. So I was beating myself up. I was like, listen, she said she was going to get up. I was like, thank God. Thank God. Please. Please. So I don't forget myself. Amen. Uh, just want to reiterate um, a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, if you're watching us today, if you're here with us physically today, uh, continue to trust God in your giving. Amen. Uh, we've been doing this uh, for a minute now, so everybody knows that there's three ways that you can give. 
Um, you can go online to give at New York, New Light Baptist Church dot org. Uh, simply click on the donate button uh, from the menu and you can go from there. Uh, if you would prefer to mail in your, your tithe and offering, please do so. Amen. If you would prefer, amen, if you're around the neighborhood, you just want to drop it into the mail slot, you can do that as well. Uh, whatever you decide to do, we thank God for his uh, ability to keep, continue to bless us so we can be a blessing to his kingdom. Amen. Amen. So we want to pick it back off of what Sister Thomas said. Amen. VBS, y'all. Amen. Vacation Bible School. Amen. For the next couple of weeks, um, everybody, uh, every demographic has a couple of days. Uh, we want to impress upon you, please register. Amen. Please register. Once again, please register. Amen. It's not something you just show up to. Amen. Got to register. We're trying to capture uh, our, our numbers. Amen. We want to make sure everybody's in the right place. Everybody's in the place there. Uh, supposed to be. So please register. We're going to make sure that the, the link will be on the website today. Uh, so when you get home, if you uh, before this day is over, amen, please register. We want to see you there. Um, the teachers have been working hard, amen. They are ready, geared up, fired up, and ready to go. We want to have great dialogue, great discussion, amen. Um, listen, I, I don't want all our resources to go to waste. People have been working hard on this. They've been prepping and planning for this. Amen. They don't want to be on Zoom and only one person, two people show up. Amen. Y'all know how that feel. When you prep and plan for something and don't nobody show up. All right. So let's, let's look, we, we, we get in our feelings when stuff don't happen. Now it's happening. People are ready, geared up, ready to go. Let's take advantage of the opportunity that we have, amen, to, to continue to study about the God we say we love so much, amen, and to be in fellowship with one another and dialogue with one another about our faith, amen. So let's be excited about this, amen. The Vacation Bible School, for the day is over with, if you have not registered, please register, amen, amen, and amen, amen. And join us uh, on next week, amen, uh, to celebrate what God has done. Oh, I, I almost heard crickets. To celebrate what God has done. Amen. This 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 shaping up to be a tough Sunday, <laughs> Minister Dixon. Amen. Let's come together next week to celebrate what God has done. Uh, Pastor Bruce Jones is going to be here, my brother and my friend. Amen. He's going to preach his socks off. Amen. Uh, I'm looking forward to fellowshipping with him and, uh, and fellowshipping with you all as well. But we want to come together and celebrate the Lord. Amen. We want to celebrate what God has done. It ain't about what I have done because I'm just dressed up dirt. It's about what God has done through his servants. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So if you want to shout, you want to bless, you want to bless them, bless God for what he has done. Amen. So we look forward um, to, for you joining us. Amen. As we consider, celebrate a God who has been so good. Amen. Another year, God has been awesome. Amen. Another year, God has been great. Another year, God has been faithful. Amen. I'm, I'm just waiting for somebody to, 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 to convince me that they know the God I'm talking about. I'm going I'm to I'm be quiet. Let the men come up. Amen. Y'all get them ready, fellas. Y'all get them ready. Amen. God bless you. We come back. We're going to give you what God has given us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want y'all to put your hands together and make a loud noise for Brother Tyson representing for the men today. Stepping up for the men.
Let me get everybody to do this together. I won't. I won't give up or give in.
Hallelujah. Anybody standing? Don't fool me now. Anybody standing in his will? I know we like it our way. I know we want it the way we want it. Amen. We, we want that fast food way of life. But is anybody standing? Anybody can say, God, I want it that for you to have it your way and not my way. That, that's a level of maturity, amen. We, we trying to get there, right? To say, God, I want, it to have it. I want God to do, have it the way you want it, not the way I want it. Because you realize when you get some age on you, amen, that all we do is mess it up. I want some, somebody to be honest in the house. And when I put my hands on it, I end up messing it up. I ended up jacking it all up. But when I put it in God's hand, when I stand in his will, then that late in the midnight hour, he going to start turning it around and around and around and around and around. Y'all, I, I see y'all getting it now. And around and around. But you got to stand. Stand in his way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bow your heads with me, Lord. We thank you for how you minister to us. How you, how you tell us within our heads and within our hearts exactly what we need to hear. Lord, Thank you for shaking up the monotony, Lord, the, the, the same old, same old, Lord. Thank you for revealing yourself in the service today, Lord God. God, we're prepped and we're ready now, God. We, 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 got, we, we warmed up. We're ready for the word, God. We're ready for what you have to say on today. Lord, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, that's going to move from heart to heart, from from. from, from from people out there watching virtually to people watching here in the, in the pew, Lord God, we are waiting for what you have to say, Lord. And now, God, we pray right now that you don't, uh, that me and my, my, my flesh and my, my weakness, Lord God, uh, that the people aren't penalized, God. So help me, Lord God. Strengthen me on today, Lord God. Uh, your strength works best in weakness, Lord God. So we ask that you touch my head. Touch my heart, touch my tongue, allow me to communicate your gospel, Lord, the way you want to communicate it. And that Holy Spirit is always, have your way, have your way, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, I'm fired up, fired up, fired up, fired up, fired up. Got my jeans on, y'all, I'm ready to go. Amen. A little slicked out. I ain't wear my Air Force Ones today, so got, got the comfortable loafers on, but I'm feeling good anyway. I'm feeling good anyhow. Uh, but listen, amen, let's get it on. In the words of Marvin, let's get it on. Amen. Listen, we, 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 um, we want to invite you all. I mean, I know we've been in Acts. We're still in our sermon series and our teaching series. We've been in since January, y'all. It's, it's July now. We fit, we fit to go right into August. Amen. This year is going on away from here. Amen. Thank God we're still here. So that's a praise right there. I'm still here. I'm still here. Amen. So we've been walking through uh, the book of Acts. Um, today what we're going to do, um, you know, it's amazing um, how God will, you know, shift things. You know, you, 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 you say, all right, God, I'm going to talk about this. We're going to walk right here. God said, no, th they need to be right here next Sunday. And then I got to get out the way. And I got to let God do what he do. So God said, look, this is where you need to go. So I invite you to turn with me, amen, to the gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Luke, 18th chapter. Begin our reading at the 35th verse. Thank you to our music ministry, amen, our minister of music, 
Amen. Our musicians. Amen. We got a brother, our brother uh, sharing with us today. Brother Daryl. Amen. God bless you. Love hearing that guitar. I love hearing it. I love hearing it. Uh, to our media ministry, thank God for you all, to the brothers holding it down. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. We're going to begin our reading there. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It's going to hit different today, y'all. Luke 18, beginning at verse 35, reads this way. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When he heard the noise of a crowd going past, he asked, what was happening? They told him that Jesus, the Nazarene, was going by. Verse 38, so he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 39, be quiet. The people in front yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped in order that the man be brought to him. As the man came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, all right, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Instantly, somebody say instantly, the man could see. And he followed Jesus, praising God. And all who saw it, praise God too. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. They told him that Jesus was passing by. So he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So I, I believe I got some folk who know what I'm talking about when my man shouted that. And, and then the, verse 39, uh, uh, be quiet. The people in the front yelled at him. But he only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Just for a few moments, with your prayers and the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to preach from the subject, I got a reason to shout. I got a reason. Uh, I got a reason to shout. I thank God for the presence of the Holy Ghost power to Holy Spirit, amen, working in and through us, amen. We came together on uh, last week, music ministry, amen. Shout out to all music ministry members, holla if you hear me, amen. We had an opportunity, yes, our unplugged session, we had an opportunity to come together, amen. We made a covenant together, amen. We shared, we talked, we laughed, amen. Uh, we, we had a good old time. And during that uh, time that we shared together, I, I posed to them this question. And for those who are on the line, they, 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 they know what I'm about to say. I posed this question, and I asked them, when, when you're involved in higher worship, when, when you're going in, when you're up here, and you're involved in higher worship, from your vantage point, tell me, what do you see? What, what, what do you see? I ask them this because in, in certain places, especially in public, because we in public, there's a crowd. It's amazing how we conduct ourselves in moments of celebration. It's amazing. Amen. We in public and uh, we, 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 we at the game. I put it on me. I'm at the Lakers game. Don't, 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 don't have me in L.A. at the arena at the Lakers game. Because I'm an actor fool. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm shouting at the referees. I'm going to be shouting at the players. I'm going to try to wheel my team to a W. Because as a fan, I feel I can do that. I'm going to shout, and I don't care what nobody say, because I paid a ticket to get up in here. 
That's right. That's my team. Thank you, Minister Dixon. That's my team. I got a right and a reason to shout. I, I ain't get y'all on that one. I'm using me. I ain't, I ain't, you, look, you, you put yourself in it. 2004, I had an opportunity to go see my favorite artist, Prince. That's shocking to some of y'all. How can he like Prince? But since I was about this, Tyson, since he said, I like Prince. That's my homeboy. That's my man's in them. So when I was old enough, I got in my car, my Nissan Maxima that had about almost 300,000 miles on it, and I made the trek to Raleigh, North Carolina to see my boy, Prince. Let me tell you something. When my man got up there and started playing Purple Rain, won't no black people, won't no white people, won't no women, won't no men, won't, won't, all the stuff that divide us didn't even matter. We up there crying, hands holding Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Play it, boy, play that, play that guitar. I can't believe I'm here. Lord, Prince, Lord Jesus, he right there, I'm here. Lord, we were shouting up and down. But when we in church, in the house of God, for some reason, we are afraid. Worrying about what folk in the crowd going to think. When we shout, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Look, look, I, I, look I, I, all I'm suggesting this morning is that we, we all got teams that we cheer for. I guarantee you, amen, Sunday morning, first Sunday, NFL, week one, when we get home, we're going to be on the couch. If not at the game. Pastor, I'll holler at you next week, next Sunday. We're going to be cheering. When, when we get to the concert, your favorite artist might still be alive today, and you may have a ticket to go see them. And I guarantee you when your song comes up, just like when I was singing Purple Rain and I was showing up singing that thing, when your song comes up, you're going to belt it word for word, just like the your neighbor beside you to the left and to your right, even though your favorite artist didn't save you. Even though that team you cheer for did not wake you up this morning. But when we get to church, though, all of a sudden, we worry about, y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody be, we, we, we so worried. Lord, I can't, I, I, it's bubbling up in me, Jesus, but I can't get up because I'm worried about sister so-and-so. Let me go over here. I, I can't get in the, the, the mood and, and mode for worship, so I, I'm so uh, obsessed with our brother going to look at me. We get nervous. We get nervous and allow folk who don't know your story. You don't, you don't know why I'm here. You don't know why I got my hands lifted up. You don't know why I'm shouting. You ain't been with me all week long. You saw me on Sunday, but you didn't know what I walked up in here with. You don't know how far God has brought me. Don't let the suit fool you. Don't let the church hat fool you. Don't know. And we let the crowd silence us. But somewhere I read it. Let everything. I, I read it somewhere. Let Everything, Minister Dixon, that, that's what it said, didn't it? Let everything that have breath praise you, Lord. Oh, you ain't get you ain't get that one? Oh, let me let me throw this at you. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. 
Oh, I feel my help coming. Come on, somebody. And let us exalt his name together. Not my name. You're not exalting me. Let's, let's, don't get it twisted. Not my name, but let us exalt his name. Y'all ain't get that one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with what? Not with your attitude. Somewhere I read. For this reason, when Jesus passes by, like the blind man in the text. I don't care when nobody has to stay. I got a reason. You got a reason. We got a reason to get his attention. We got a reason, come on somebody, to shout. And I say shout, y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about Jesus. Jesus. She's, uh, when my daughter, when my daughter was born, amen, everybody thought she was going to be a daddy's girl. No. She's a mama's girl. She only calls me when she wants something. So when she started talking, amen, guess what? She liked cookies. She like Oreos, them golden Oreos, not the old school ones we grow up with, the golden Oreos, right? And she knows they're located in the pantry. Homegirl gets off of wherever she's going. She'll make her way to the pantry, and I hear, Daddy. She don't call me no other time. I'm sitting on the couch, Daddy. And then when I don't get up fast enough, Daddy. I can hear her with her hands on the knob trying to get the pantry open. And then she starts yelling out, Daddy! And I get up, go to the pantry, and get those cookies. Why? Because she shouted loud enough. Because she wanted it. She saw those cookies and said, I'm going to call my daddy because I know my daddy going to get up when I need something. And we sitting up in here, jacked up from the bottom to the floor, and, and, and we don't call on daddy when we need to call on daddy. Daddy is waiting for you to open up your mouth and shout to get his attention. Daddy got a reason. Let, 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 let's look at homeboy. Let's look at, let, let's look at homeboy in the text. Take a moment for examination. Blind man. Anybody know what I'm talking about when you feel like every day is the same? Same thing every day. Wake up, routine, same. Nothing changes. All day, every day, the same thing. That's the blind man. Because every day he woke up, it was dark. Every day involved begging. Every day was a reminder by his community that his issue was a punishment from God and not a disability. Because in that context and in that time, eye disease was prevalent. There were a lot of people in Jesus' time who had issues with blindness, issues with seeing. Amen. Not, we don't have in the text the medical advances we have in 2022. Amen. Back in those days, amen, something could land on your eyes and infect your eyes. This is what they were dealing with in the text. And possibly this is what happened to that blind man. Amen. doesn't say he was blind from birth, because we saw that in, in, in John. Amen. When we met the guy that was blind from birth, this guy was just blind. That's what the text says. Amen. This is Luke's rendition of the text. If you go to other gospels, amen, you'll see the blind man named Blind Bartimaeus. Amen. Y'all know, y'all read that story. Amen. Then there's another rendition of it where there's two blind men. Luke is different. 
Amen. Doesn't give him a name, just says he's a blind beggar. And this is how we talk about this, amen, for, for, my, for my Bible study people, amen, you know that the gospel according to Luke is written by the same person who wrote Acts. See, this is what we've been talking about. So God is working it all together. So, so Luke is showing us this blind man, amen, whose community is looking at him like he's damaged, he's beyond repair, and he's voiceless. And here he is begging. And right now, I'm convinced every day that there are some of us who believe our ailments and our struggles are a punishment from God. You can't convince me otherwise because some folk believe it that God is punishing them for, for something that they did in the past. That's why I'm going through the struggle. Some people are saying to themselves right now, brothers and sisters who are watching me, I'm going through this right now because of something I did in the past. Let me tell you this. That's not how God works. I came by here to tell you something different than what you've been telling yourself. And that is, today going to be different. Today is going to be different. Those who are watching me virtually, guess what? Today won't be like any other day. Why? Because God is going to show you something different. God is going to give you a reason to shout. Like the old man in the text, God is going to demonstrate divinity in your life. It's appropriate. It's appropriate, y'all. I want y'all to see this because it says at the beginning as Jesus was approaching Jericho. All right? So it's a reason why I believe Luke put Jericho into this story. Y'all know, y'all heard of Jericho right before. We go back to Joshua. What happened in Joshua? Amen. There was the wall of Jericho, high walls. For you can't get through. Amen. Couldn't get through. They were going in this town. They had to take the town, but the walls were too, were too much. They were fortified. Amen. There was a stronghold. Amen. But this is what God told Joshua to tell to the people. He said, look, this is what I want you to do. I know you're looking at something you think that can't be defeated. I know you're looking at an obstacle. I know you're looking at a stronghold. But this is what I want you to do. Every day for six days, I want you to walk around the town one time. Every day for six days, I want you to walk around one time. And then on the seventh day, this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk around that town seven times. Amen. This is what, walk around that, time, that town on the seventh day seven times. Amen. And when the priests blow their horn, this is what I want you to do. I want you to shout. Now, that's what he told Joshua. And that's what Joshua told the people. And he, they looked at Joshua just like y'all looked at me now, like I'm crazy. So this is how it's going to happen. You tell me that these walls, this, this, this obstacle, this stronghold is going to come down because we shout. So, so, so what happens? They decide we're going to do what God say do. So day one, they walked around the town one time. Day two, they walked around the town one time. Day three, they walked around the town one time. Day four, one time again. Day five, one time again. Day six, one time again. Here comes day seven. Here comes, here comes. God said what's going to happen. Day seven comes. They walk around seven times. The horn blows and Joshua says, now shout. And they shouted. And it was all theirs. The stronghold, the thing that couldn't be overcome, somehow God had wiped it clean and said, take it, it's yours. So Luke puts Jericho in the text, amen, because there's a blind man who has something that can't be overcome. As a stronghold, he can't break from. There's some darkness that's keeping him where he is, that keeps him walking around but not going in. And his shout is what gets him in the presence of the Lord. Your shout can collapse strongholds. Your, your, your shout has the ability 
amen, to, to, to release you from some stuff. I believe Luke snuck Jericho in there to remind us that, that breakthroughs begin with a shout. Oh, I know I got somebody up in here that, that can testify, amen, that stuff started happening when I opened my mouth. I'm going to say it like that. I'm going to say, uh, forgive me, children, amen. Say mouth. Listen to your teacher, amen, when they say mouth. But for the sake of this preachment, I'm going to say mouth because that's how we talk. Blind man knew something. He knew I had to, he, he knows something is going to be different with this day because why? There's more commotion than usual. Uh, he's begging. Day, day is the same as it always been. He going to beg, amen. But there's something different about this day because there's more commotion going on than he's used to. What's going on? Now, oh, he, he can't see, but he can hear. You know, some, some believe that when you lose a sense, the other senses become more uh, keen and sharp. So he can hear. The feet. He can hear people uh, uh, talking and, and making noise. And, and, and here, he's sitting down, he's waiting, like, man, because he knows when the people come, amen, that's where the money, the people bring the money in. I got the big, and, and the only way I'm going to get something, if it, people come, but he notices there's more commotion than usual. What's, what's going on, he asked. What's going on? And they told him, of Nazareth, about to pass by. He's begging, but somebody told him, amen, there's something going on, but he's about, he's, he, he, he wants to do what he's usually done in the past, but somebody told him, Jesus, about to come. Jesus is passing by. He, he, he must, I believe, for him to have the reaction that he had, he must have heard about Jesus. He, he must have heard uh, about the master and the teacher, amen. He must have heard, amen, he's a healer. Oh, he has the ability to restore sight. You, you, you ain't heard about Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus can do the doggone thing. Jesus is passing by. He recognizes the commotion. He, he received the, the knowledge that, 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 that Jesus is closer than he has ever been, and he saw an opportunity to call on him. Let me say that again. He hears a commotion. He receives knowledge that Jesus is closer than he has ever been. And by that deduction, he realized, I need to call on him. Chaos, listen to me, chaos and commotion in our lives is an opportunity, amen, for you to call on Christ. Look at it as an opportunity. To call on Christ because when you're going through something, when there's more commotion than usual, that's some, that ought to be an indication. I, I need to call on Jesus. Or oh, oh, when, when some chaos and some struggle involved in your life, amen, and it's usually more pronounced than you. That, that's time when you need to get on your knees. You need to start calling on the Christ. He going to pass by. He going to pass by. He's coming. You're going through something. You need to receive your sight. Oh, let me get it. Oh, oh you, 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 you can't uh, uh, express yourself the way you want to express yourself, but you can shout. You do know his name, don't you? His name is Jesus. And guess what? He's about to pass by. He's coming to Richmond. He's coming to your block. He's coming into your neighborhood. He's about to knock on your door. What you going to do? What are you going to do? One of my favorite songs, Old Hymns, Pass Me Not. That's my testimony, Pass Me Not. When Jesus in my neighborhood on my block, I'm trying to sit on the porch. And when I know he coming across the corner, I'm going to be like I'm waiting for the mailman. I'm going to be at the end of the driveway. Jesus! He's coming. We say that all the time. Amen. When, when the world jacked up, we say it a lot now, Jesus coming. Amen. For real, for real, he going to pass by. He passed by all the time. We thought he left. Jesus ain't went nowhere. Amen. Jesus is about to pass by. 
And our testimony ought to be, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. It doesn't say, hear my humble whisper. See, the psalmist knew what, it, knew what they were talking about because they knew in order to get his attention, you got to raise the roof. You got to shout. Hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling, do not pass me. But let me get into it. Let me get into it. Amen. Amen. Knowing Jesus was passing by, immediately Luke declared that the man began shouting. Jesus, son of David, have mercy, watch this, on me. What does this help us to do? What does this, how does this shout help us? I'm going to tell you. This shout helps us because it lets us know that it has to be personal. Your, your shout has to be personal. Listen, listen, listen. The blind man can't see, Right? The blind man can't see. All he does is sit in his spot and beg, but he hears a commotion. Jesus is coming. He's about to pass by. The man says, I'm going to use what I got. I'm going to shout. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Nowhere in the scripture do I see that the blind man needed a worship leader. Did, did you see it? Minister Dixon, it didn't say, I need a music, a minister of music. I need the right song. Before Jesus get here, I need the right song. He didn't, he didn't say somebody need to say something to get me hyped up. At that moment, he needed Jesus to see him. How you going to see me, Jesus? I got to shout. He needed his sight restored. He couldn't see. He had an issue in his life. He struggled with the dark. He could not see. I need Jesus to see me. I got to shout because I can't be dignified and get delivered. Woo. I said I can't be dignified with your holy self and get delivered. You can't worry about how others going to think you look. Just because you got a title, I don't care if you got a PhD. I don't care if you got a Master of Arts. I don't care if you got a BA. You need Jesus. And the only way to get to him is Jesus. You can't be cute and call on Jesus. Oh, I'm so tired of cute Christians. Whoa, deliver me. I know you're mad. I know you're mad, but God told me to tell you this. I, I, ain't, I ain't, this is coming from the Lord. He said, I'm tired of cute people calling on me. I wish I had some people who did not care. And all they wanted was me. Tired of being cute. You want something, you ain't, when you want something in the natural, you don't get cute with it. You work, get that money, and go get it. You want that car, you drive up in there, and you drive up out of there with the car you want. You want that house, you go do what you got to do to get it. You don't get cute. You want that woman, fellas, what? You walk up in there, and you say what you got to say. You kick the Willie Bobos to get her. Yeah. Ladies, you want the attention. Other fellas, what you do? You make sure your hands tight and right, nails, feet done. No time to get cute. I got, I want something. I need something. And when you need something from the Lord, you cannot get cute with it. Can't get cute. No way in the Bible said the Lord said, I honor your cuteness. This is a not America's top model. You are not parading in front of God trying to get his attention. God don't honor that. Your shout got to be personal. Not only does it have to be personal, it got to be persistent. It has to be persistent. He shouts one time. He shouts one time and the people in the front, text here, people in the front told him, 
be quiet. Some, some versions of the text, people say, shut up. He's shouting, for he calling on Jesus. And there are people who got the nerve to tell him to shut up. Because in their opinion, his disability, like I mentioned, was a punishment for God. And, and for that reason, Jesus ain't trying to hear you. G Jesus, you don't, you not, as a matter of fact, you don't deserve to be heard by Jesus. But the Bible showed. Yeah. When the haters told him to shut up, he just got louder. Yeah. Woo, that ought to be, that, that, that we can put a, a, a bookmark right there. When the haters tell you to shut up. When you call on the name of Jesus and you got some haters in your pew. Oh, if you, uh, let me go over here. And, and you calling on him because you want something from him. You need something from him. And there's a hater looking at you that turn around with that look. You got permission to shout louder. No, no, it wasn't polite. Homeboy wasn't polite. He, he didn't worry about protocol. Yes, he was an interruption. He was an irritant. But when you want something and need something from the Lord, you can't worry about being polite. You can't worry about procedure and protocol. I'm blind. I can't see. Every day is dark. I need some illumination. Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. I'm talking, does somebody know what I'm talking about? Amen. We say that all the time. Lord, have mercy. Y'all ought to know what this blind man is dealing with. He, he's going through all of this. He shout, and then you got people telling him, be quiet. But he, in return, shouts louder. He, he took the volume up. He turned the volume up on his shout to say this, I don't care what you think. If I can insert bland into Luke, the, 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 the blind man would have responded, I ain't thinking about y'all. I ain't thinking about y'all, and that ought to be your testimony today. I ain't thinking about you. I ain't thinking about what you got to say about me. I ain't thinking about what you got to say about my shout. I don't care what you think about the clothes I'm wearing because I'm in a mood to praise him and I can't have all these shackles on me. I can't have your customs and traditions on me. I'm calling on the name of the Lord and I'm only going to get louder. I'm going to get more persistent. You tell me to shut up, I'm going to get louder. You tell me to be quiet, I'm coming up front, and I'm going to shout louder. Because when you need Jesus, you don't care about disapproving people. I say when you show enough need to Christ, you, you, you don't care about being polite. You throw that stuff, when you, show, when, when you broke down, and bust it up, and you need a healing, you need to be restored, you need Jesus to wipe the tears from your eyes, you need reassurance that it's going to be okay, you this close to jumping off the edge, can I, can I, can I talk to somebody, you, you, you depressed, and the only thing that's going to stop you from jumping off the cliff is Jesus. In that moment, there's no time to worry about protocol and procedure. If you lying on the floor bleeding, you don't care about tradition. 911. Emergency. You need to treat your stuff like an emergency that only Christ can fix. You got to be persistent, personal. Not only that, your shout ought to get you in his presence. Right? So it's personal. Have mercy on me. 
It's persistent. He shouted louder after he was told to shut up. And his shout got him in the presence of the Lord. Jesus told his homeboys, everybody that was connected to him, he said, bring that dude over here. Bring, bring homeboy over here. I heard him. Bring him over here. And, and, and when, when the man gets to Jesus, I don't know about y'all, but when I read the text, I was like, Jesus, you asked a weird question. <laughs> Ain't it, though? You read it. He asked the man, what you want me to do for you? <laughs> and some of us would say, Lord, what you don't want me to do? Whatever you want to do with me. But he asked, what do you want me to do for you? Why? Now, isn't it obvious? It's obvious to us. He's blind. Hey, amen. He might be broke, but hey, amen. He can't see. I take being able to see over being, I, I, can, I can handle being broke, <laughs> but blind, I, I want that restored first. So to us, it's obvious. Restore his sight. That, that's, that's what the man wants. He wants to see Jesus. Why are you asking this question? This is an easy one. Perhaps, this, this is why, perhaps Jesus wanted the man to speak it. He, maybe he wanted to speak it. He wanted, he's in front of the crowd. Perhaps Jesus said, no, you, you, you got you to gotta speak this. I want to hear you say it. Because life and death is in the power of what? I want to hear you say it. You, 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 know, you, can, you, can, you done got up in here. You, you in my presence. I need you to open your mouth. Your shout got you here. Now I need you to tell me what you want. And here we go back to being cute. He didn't get cute. He, he, he didn't even hesitate. He said, Lord, I want to see. Woo! That's a testimony right there because some of us right now, that's how, that's how Lord, I want to see. Look, 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 that's how you got to get. You got to get. You, you got to be forceful with it. Tell them what you want. Well, we we sing this stuff all. It keeps on coming to mind. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. I, the saints used to sing that with some feet, with, with some fervor. Tell them what you want. Tell him. Man didn't mince words in public. He's in public now. He he didn't mind feeling embarrassed. He didn't mind expressing, because when he said, Lord, I want, to hit, I want to see, he was telling Jesus, I know you can do it. Right. His face said, I'm, I'm with the right man, I'm in the right place, and at the right time. Lord, I want to see. You got to understand, the opportunity has presented itself for him to receive that which nobody else can give him. So now it's not time for playing around. He got to put up or shut up. And he has proven in the text that he ain't about to shut up. So instead of being cute, instead of missing words, he said, Lord, I want to see. Beloved, can I tell you today that when you're in his presence, you can't, you, you, you can't, uh, 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 you, you, don't, you can't have an issue with expressing your faith in front of people. Because when you want something, you can't worry about the people that are around you. Got to be personal, got to be persistent. But the, when you get in his presence, it's not the time to worry about who behind me, who in front of me, who beside me. Don't worry about it. You in the crowd now. Jesus want to see how bad you want it. How bad you want it. What do you, Jesus walk up in here right now. What you going to do? You know what your issue is. You ain't got to tell nobody up in here. God knows what you need. He already knew what he wanted. He just wanted to, him to say it. So when Jesus walks in here right now and he's standing in front of you and he asks, what do you want me to do for you? Y'all looking at me. What do you want him to do for you? <laughs> Jesus is here. You ain't worried about me no more. I'm in line after you. I know what I want. I know what I need. 
And I ain't scared to say it in front of y'all. When Jesus is in the building. Jesus is up in here. I'm telling you. Didn't the Bible say at any time. He can come at any time. Be ye ready. That's what they always say. Be ye ready. He can, he can come at any time. Right? Jesus coming to New Light. He going to be here in two minutes. He fitting to walk through that door. He going to come to you. What do you want me to do for you? Now, we read this, the, 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 the scriptures all our lives, and we believe that the life and death is in the power of the tongue. If I speak it, amen, it's going to come into existence. If I believe it, amen, it's going to happen, amen. All I got to do is believe it in faith, amen, because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the absence of things what? You believe it, even though you can't see it. This man is blind. But he believes Jesus, amen, is going to restore his sight. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see authentic. Right? Not worried about Minister Dixon. Not worried about Deacon Arthur. Not worried about Mr. Laverne. Not worried about Brother Rodney. Not worried about Brother Ernest. Not worried about Brother Zen, Sister Joanne, Sister Deborah, Sister Dora. I need to see. Can I make it plain? I, I, I can't get no plainer than that. I need to see. And I don't care if I'm in public. I got to express my faith. Because my faith is the key that's going to what? Unlock this door. You got to be bold, y'all. You got to be bold. We, we say this in the natural. What? The boldest person is going to get it, right? The person who wanted most is going to get it. Which, how do you think the supernatural works? It's not for the timid. It's not. Forget what you heard. This is it right here. This blind man who needs his sight, right? Not missing words. Don't care about who sees. He is bold. He can't see where he's going, y'all. All he knows is that Jesus, his shout got him to Jesus. Jesus is right there. He answers a question. Lord, I want to see. Your request has to be bold. It has to be bold in the presence of other people. You can't be secret saint. That's not going to work. Undercover disciple. That's not going to work. I come out in the cover of darkness. I am Nicodemus. Jesus, meet me at night so we can talk. Don't work like that. When you show enough need something, you got to tell the Lord what you want. They knew what they were talking about back in the day. Jesus on the main line, tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Don't just look at me. Tell him. We get here. We get silent. We can't tell Jesus nothing. You come to, you wait to get to church to be silent. <laughs> and then when you leave church, Lord have mercy. You get to his house, then you got you to just sit here and go through the motions. Yo, I'm trying to work this out for myself. I'm trying to understand it for myself. For those who are like-minded, like me, trying to understand it yourself, amen. I walk through these doors, amen, because I know this is the house of God, and, and God can hear me. He can hear me everywhere, but when I get to a house, his house, something different take over. I know he's here. So how can I be silent? 
How can how? man shouts. I want y'all to think that this man shouted even louder when he was told to be quiet. I'm almost done. Here, here's the good thing. It was personal. It was persistent. Shout got, into his, got him into Jesus' presence. But his shout led others to praise. The Bible says, the man says, I want to see. And Jesus said, guess what? Your sight is restored. Your faith has healed you. Don't miss that. Your faith. Not how many ministries you in. Not how many titles you got. Not how many good deeds you've done. But your faith has healed you. Bible says instantly the man could see. Imagine how happy he must have been. For all of those I asked the question, you, you know what it's like for your day to be the same all the time? Imagine what it must have felt like to go from darkness to light immediately. That's like your issue that you're struggling with right now, being gone from you, just like that, immediately. He's no longer bound by darkness, no longer chains holding him down. Culture, community no longer can identify him by his issue. He can see. Praise God. Right then and there, what does the Bible say? He followed Jesus. His faith has healed him. Jesus is the real deal. Jesus, I'm following you. And the text says that he began to praise him. But Luke didn't stop right there because Luke tells us that not only did he praise, Jesus, praise the Lord, after the people saw what was done and that Jesus has healed him, the man was praising the Lord, then everybody else joined in and praised God with him. Oh, don't, don't miss that. He shouted. He got in his presence. Getting into his presence, amen, caused him to see. Now I can see, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And while I'm following you, I'm going to praise God. And while I'm praising God, people are going to see me praising God, and they're going to stop praising God too. Your praise is contagious. That's all I'm trying to say. When people see what God has done for you and see your shout and see your praise, they can't help but start praising the Lord themselves. We all have seen it. We've seen how the Holy Spirit moves. We've seen how a shout, amen, from the front pew can go to the back and how it can go from the back to the middle, all the way back up to the front. And then before long, all of us are worshiping the Lord. Your praise is contagious. You got a reason to shout. And it's so good, amen, when, when you know it's so good to praise him, you want other people to feel that same way you feel. That's why that's, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That, that, the psalmist will say, look, this is so good. I want you to do it with me. It feels so good to take the weight off your shoulders. It feels so good that it's comfortable. Amen. Join with me and let us worship the Lord. Let us wave our hands. Let's not wait till we get in the stadium, in the arena, and when our favorite artist is in front of us because they didn't save us. 
They didn't restore my sight. They didn't take the needle out of my arm. They didn't take the drink out of my mouth. They didn't take this words that I used to say. The way I walked, they, my team didn't change the way I walked. My team didn't change the way I talked. It was God. So I got a reason to wave my hands. I got a reason to open my mouth. Because I know God has proven that when I shout, he going to see me. I shout because I'm showing my appreciation. I'm trying to get his attention. I'm showing my appreciation, but I'm trying to get his attention too. It works together. I'm done. I'm done. Let me leave you with this. Let me leave you with this. I took my son to a baseball game. And it was a thrilling game. It really was. Went all the way down to the wire. But we looked down at the deck area below us, near the dugout, some area where people can sit. There was a lot of kids there because kids like to get the foul balls and the, the, the baseball players would throw them the ball. So you got to understand, these kids were hype. Let me say that again. They, 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 was, they, they were lit. They were hype. They wanted the ball. Right? Not only that, they were into the game. From the first inning all the way to the tenth inning. And there was this one little boy in particular. Had his baseball hat on. Had his glove on. And this young man, he was in the bleacher. And he started shouting. He said, let's start a wave. Let's start a wave. He went over here. Let's start a wave. Let's start a wave. And then his section started doing this. Right? What happened? Hold on. It got from where he was to here. Not everybody participated. Watch this. The little boy got louder. He got, he started pounding his glove. Let's start a wave. Let's start a wave. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Started waving. Went from here to there. Went halfway around the stadium. Then shut down. Most of us would have gave up say, I'm not going to do this. These people obviously are not into the game. They don't want to cheer on the team. But this little boy once again goes into the row, starts pounding his glove again. Let's start a wave. He does it again. Goes from the upper decks. Reaches the halfway point. Everybody's doing it. Goes around. Everybody's doing it. Reaches over the halfway point. Then it comes over here. Everybody's doing it. It goes all the way back to the end of the stadium. Everybody throws their hands up. If we can magnify a team in a stadium... If, if people who don't know each other can participate in praise and shout for some players that they don't know who haven't done a thing for them, how is it that we can't even do this? Even more than that, how is it that we can't have that same fervor as that little boy? Who were all, all he was saying is, magnify the team with me. 
and let's lift up the team together. I challenge you today. I challenge you to look at this blind man's example and make it personal. Be persistent. Don't give up. Get louder. Come bold with it. When you get in his presence, be bold. Because what happens? When I start waving, Miss Brenda gonna start waving. When Miss Brenda start waving, Miss Betty gonna start jumping. When Miss Betty start jumping, Ernest gonna start running. When Mr. Dixon start playing, somebody gonna be doing some backflips. When somebody start doing some backflips, somebody's just gonna start moving and don't know why they're moving, but they're moving. Because once upon a time, we didn't care. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you today to praise him like he does something for you. I, I dare you. You ain't got to do it for my benefit. I, I, I just day. Because I, I, I don't know what he's done for you. I can't save you. I, let me say that again. I can't save you. I can walk with you. I can hold your hand. I can encourage you, but I can't save you. I love my Lakers, but my Lakers can't save me. Prince can't save me. He gone. I know who can. I know who's able. I know who woke me up this morning. I know when I had a pain in my back and it was bothering me and I was like, Lord, why is this thing bothering me? Why I can't get rid of it? And then the next day I wake up and all of a sudden who's, it's gone. I know. If he's done something for you, it's not hard. You don't need me. Praise him. Hallelujah. 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 What we used to say, work out your soul salvation. Work it out like you at the gym and you need to sweat. Work it out. I can't save you. Mama can't save you. Grandmama can't save you. I say if you showing up need something, you dealing with something right now. Look, look, we gonna be quiet, we gonna pray, we gonna announce the benediction, and y'all gonna be able to exit, amen. But while you're in his house right now, and if you need something, he's waiting. Hallelujah. 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 We... Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are open. Listen. We... We, 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 as we mentioned before, amen, we, we wanted to go in a different direction. But God took us in this direction. Because sometimes we need to be convicted. Right? We need to be encouraged. We need to be, we need instruction. 
But the scripture also tells us that we need to be slapped on the hand sometimes. Right? And I know somebody may be watching and saying, Pastor, why you got to talk like that? Why you got to be like that? But what I'm saying is, I don't care what your personality is. I don't care if you're soft-spoken. I don't care if you're the loudest in the room. But when you're showing up need something, you're going to open your mouth. I'm not the loudest person in the room, but when I need something, I open my mouth. You don't have to be the loudest person. You don't have to be the soft, most soft-spoken, but no matter where you fall on the spectrum, we all get excited about something. I'm just asking a question. How come we can't get excited? When, when we heal and Jesus is passing by, how is it? Where does that fervor go? Another question, what, what do we devote that fervor to? Because we were created to worship. So if we weren't worshiping God, we worshiping something. Doors of the church are open. We, we invite those who want a deeper relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. We understand, amen, that this is not the first time you've been exposed to Jesus Christ. That people have been dropping seeds in your life throughout your lives. And perhaps there's been somebody, amen, who has dropped that seed and then there's somebody who has watered. I believe today God's going to get the increase how he's going to do that right with your life. God is going to use you for his glory. How are we to start? How do you start? One step in faith. Just like the blind man. He believed that Jesus could do it. So he didn't mind telling Jesus what he needed. If you need Jesus, to be your Lord and your Savior. If that is your desire today, if Jesus was standing here and he said, what do you want me to do for you? And you say, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. If your answer is yes, you want to be his Lord and Savior. If you want him to be your Lord and Savior today. If you've never been saved, please come. Please come today. Please come. Don't worry about who's watching. Please come. If you're watching us virtually and you want to give your life to Christ, just go to the menu, click on contact us. Share with us your desire to be saved. We want to connect with you. We want to walk with you throughout this journey. We want to pray over you, share the ABCs of salvation with you. Please come, please come. If you are already saved, looking for a church home, you are just looking for a church home, you believe New Life Baptist Church is the place for you, whether you're in the building or if you're watching me, please come, please come. Salvation membership, please come, please come. We also, amen, those who want to rededicate their lives to Christ, you are saved. Amen. You were a member, you are a member of the church, you've just been not as been committed as you want to be. The Lord spoke to you on today. And now you want to recommit your life. This is your desire. Please come. Please come. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Let us lift up the Lord in praise.
for who he is, for his presence, his power, his anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. We are going to pray as we always do. Amen. As we pray, wherever you are, amen, form your collective altars. Amen. Uh, we encourage you, amen, as we pray, you pray too. Because as the altar call uh, represents our moment with the Lord, our personal moment with the Lord, amen, before we leave his house. So I invite you to pray as well. Whether you want to stand, whether you want to sit, whether you want to come in the aisle, get on your knees, amen, however you want to do it. Amen. As you exit, amen, as always, please follow the leadership of our ushers. Amen. God bless you. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence on today, how you spoke to us through the man in the text, God, the blind man in the text. As we come to conclusion about our lives, God, how we are in your presence, God, how we are in the presence of others when it comes to you, when it comes to our faith, God, we have been challenged today. So God, as we come together in prayer, as we pray individually to God, our, our prayers that we become more bold, make our praise more personal, make our shout heard, God. We want your attention, God. We want you to know that you're appreciated by us. Thank you for a voice that we can lift up to you. No matter where we are, we can shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. So, Lord, we are thankful for your word. We thank you for the scriptures. We will carry them with us during the week, whether we go to work, to and fro, God, we're on the highways and byways of life. Your word speaks to us. And God, we give you all the glory. Now we pray over your people on today. God, we don't know what they came in here with. We don't know exactly what issue they are struggling with, whatever stronghold they need to be released from, whatever breakthrough that they need. God, you know what it is. Our prayer is that they listen to you, that they stand in your will. God, give them the instructions and the guidance necessary, just like you gave the people of Israel when they walked around Jericho, Lord God. Make it that simple for them. We thank you in advance for the blessing that they are going to receive, for the healing that they are going to receive the restoration and the redemption that they are going to receive, God. Thank you for resurrecting their spirits. All of those who are struggling mentally, physically, emotionally, God, we pray that you comfort them, Lord God. Comfort them, Lord God. They need help, God. Pray that you will place resources in their lives, God, that will help them sort out issues. Pray over now the therapists, God, who are going to receive your people. We pray over the doctors, amen, who are going to provide care for your people physically and spiritually and mentally, Lord God. We pray over your people now that they will be restored and whole. They realize that they are not damaged beyond repair. God, that you can change anything any situation and you can work it for our good so we thank you in advance Lord God for the testimonies that are going to come we thank you for the shouts that are going to occur we thank you for the praise that's going to fill this house God it's not about us it's all about you and Lord before we leave we place it all in your hands. All in your capable hands because we know you're all powerful. 
we know you know everything and we know that you're everywhere so work your miracle Lord God at the same time give us patience to wait prepare us for the battle and while you're preparing us Lord God we're going to shout we're going to shout the victory because we know we got the victory in Jesus and Lord we pray this prayer in the powerful name of our Savior our Master and our Teacher Jesus the Christ Amen 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 the men are coming back they're going to sing after they sing Amen we'll announce the benediction Hey. 